Okay, so let, let's put the model models of polymer chemistry that we have to work in order to understand strengthening. And we've got two two models or sort of two levels to our model. Um, the first model is just this basic string model, and the second level to the model is really what the individual chemistry or the mer chemistry is of those those strings. So we're just starting with this string model though, we can say, okay, what if we, we load it in, in tension, okay, in tension, and we've actually covered this already, right? We, we covered already what happens to a, a polymer when you stretch it. Generalized stress strain behavior for a polymer looks something like this, okay? And so we know after necking, where we get extensive plastic deformation, you can get continued load bearing because of some strengthening mechanism. So what we saw was we had this chain orientation along the loading axis. We're loading up and down, and that's the <coughs> direction that these strings or these molecules become oriented. So we, we can call that chain orientation. and something that happens during plastic deformation of a lot of polymers. Um, but it's also a strengthening mechanism, chain orientation. We can withdraw fibers from the melt at a careful rate, and uh, as the polymers are coming from the from the vat, the, the molecules are, are becoming aligned, and you make you draw these little fibers of oriented polymers, and <clears throat> they're quite high strength along the fiber direction, lightweight because they're polymers, so we can use those to make uh, strong uh, strong fabrics. Like, uh, let me give you a couple of examples here of oriented uh, polymers. Um, Spectra is a trade name. Okay, trade name for an oriented polyethylene. Uh, Kevlar uh, is also another fiber that has a high degree of orientation to it. The chains become aligned like that. Um, this is also, this process is also called conditioning. So spectra fiber is in fact conditioned polyethylene. Condition. All right, I'm gonna pause this and fix that. So, my gold star or red star for spelling the word. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, let's continue. So, uh, there we go. We've got one strengthening mechanism under our belt already, uh, already and, and we were able to explain it from these chains, uh, molecules as, as these uh, chains or strings. Um, let's look at. Um, Another way we can achieve this, in fact, we can we can build on this model we've got up here. What is what do we see here? We see chains that are highly organized, and so in fact that's what we call crystallinity. It's a regular um, repeating arrangement, and in the polymers, it's a repeating arrang repeating um, arrangement of molecules, not individual atoms, but molecules. So that's crystallinity. So could we achieve crystallinity without the deformation. Um, yeah, in fact, you can. So we can strengthen by favoring or designing the molecule uh, to favor crystallization. Crystallization. So how do you do that? Well, in 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 a, in a short statement. And it'll make a little bit more sense as we dive further into the structure of polymers. You design with simple and small, <clears throat> small um, mer units. Okay, and and we'll that, like I said, we'll explore what those what that really means in a bit more detail. But something like uh, like polyethylene, for example, polyethylene. Um, you know, it's very simple chemistry, just carbon, 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 with hydrogens off on the side. I won't draw them all in, you've seen it before. But that's quite simple. It's really, it's, it, I mean, it's roughly linear, at least in that depiction. And so it's quite simple. But let's, let's actually explore a, an extended analogy here with polyethylene. And you may have uh, even encountered these before um, in, in food packaging. You look at the bottom, and you're going to recycle it, and you might see this little code there. It says LDPE. Um, and you might have also seen HDPE. 
So what's um, what's what's going on? What's the difference between these things, and what what, sort, uh, what does it mean? So LD refers to low density polyethylene, and high density or HD refers to high density. High density. So how can we achieve a different density? Well, in fact, what we're doing is we're achieving crystallinity. We're achieving an organization. If you have organized molecules, they occupy less volume for the same mass. It's like if you <clears throat> go to the store and you buy, uh, what are you going to buy? You buy some noodles, right? And you buy uh, fusilli versus spaghetti. You know, if you buy the dry noodles there of spaghetti, they're packed really tightly into a little box. Whereas fusilli, these are these sort of spirally noodles, they occupy a lot more space. You buy a big cardboard box of them, but it's a, a larger box for the same mass as if it was spaghetti. So the density of the polymer, similarly, if the molecules are organized, is higher. So we can achieve a higher density of polyethylene by organizing them somehow. Well, how do you do that? Well, it goes down to this Mer chemistry. So low-density polyethylene has a molecule that looks sort of like this. What I'm doing is I'm drawing on, on these, these branches. Okay, so this is a new concept. I'll explain it for you quickly. This is called a branch. It's actually quite difficult to make a molecule that's completely um, linear. I mean, it, we, we don't. You always get some little branches off the side. And, and i got to ex explain to you what that really is. So if we, if we look here at this little part where the branch is coming off the molecule, let's explore what that really looks like close to the atomic level. So we have the main chain of carbon atoms. Okay, and if it's polyethylene, we've got hydrogen coming off the side. Hydrogen, you've got one more unit, you've got another. Okay, so here's all the hydrogens. A branch is when you've got coming off of a mer unit, you have the same mer unit coming out. So again, it's connected by these strong bonds, and this may continue for at least these could be quite long. So it's important to realize that this this branch here is the same mer chemistry in this particular example at least and it's coming off and it's strongly bonded that connection right there is a strong bond it's a primary bond to the main chain okay so you've got this and this would have hydrogen off the side as well okay I won't draw them all in but that's what a branch is so you've got these great long branches coming off the side and quite a few of them in in low density polyethylene high density polyethylene is processed so that more careful the, the there's there's branches still but there's fewer of them and they're relatively short and so what happens is you can now pack these more closely well I, not that you do it but <laughs> the molecules themselves pack more closely okay and what happens? What does that mean? Well, that leads to a higher density. Or another way of saying really that same thing is that when the molecules are organized side by side like this and packed closely, what that is is that is increased crystallinity. Okay, so we increase the crystallinity. Molecules become packed more closely together, like this. They're aligned. Well, they don't have to be necessarily aligned with the loading axis, but they're packed closely together. And so then what happens is you get more opportunities for friction, if you will. These We're going to learn that they're called secondary interactions between the chains. You can imagine it's just like the, the, these chains, these strings are all lined up, packed nicely organized and there's all of these places where they come in contact with each other along the length of the molecule versus the case where it's amorphous and then they're just kind of disorganized like this and well where are the regions where they touch each other well there's just a few where they kind of come in the vicinity of one another and they rub past each other but not all that many and so what you have to think about when you think about the properties of a polymer is well how hard would it be to go and grab one of these molecules Say this one for example. Here's my. Uh, that's a hand. <laughs> I better label that so you know. That's a molecular level hand. <laughs> okay, and what's it doing? Well, it's you're gonna try to pull one of those molecules out. 
you know, we're, we're building on this model, and it sounds kind of childish, uh, but but actually it's quite um, quite accurate. Oh, it's sh what you're shading. It looks like it's hairy hand. Anyway, there you go. So the hand is pulling that molecule out. But what does that explain? That explains plastic deformation. If you can move through the application of a load, an external load, you can move one molecule away from the neighbor by overcoming these frictional or secondary interactions, these weak interactions. That's plastic deformation. Um, it, in fact, it also explains um, it explains melting. So from just from this little uh, sort of mind exercise of thinking of a molecular level hand, that's the molecular hand, the molecular level hand. You're moving that molecule away. You can explain um, you can explain yielding. You can explain uh, what happens upon heating. I'll call it just melting for this at this point. You could even explain what happens when you try to um, dissolve a polymer. What happens? You get a short chain molecule like acetone or something, and it's got to work its way in there. Well, how hard is that to do? If it's amorphous, it's quite easy. If it's crystalline, it's a lot more difficult for that little molecule to work its way in between those. Uh, similarly, you know, if you if you if you can apply heat. To consider melting, well, you have to put more heat into the system if it's highly organized, highly crystalline, because there's all these these interactions between these highly organized molecules. So we're explaining a lot of stuff with this simple little uh, um, simple little model. <clears throat> so I think what I'll do is actually wrap this video up here, and we'll continue on in a separate video.